Ah, uh, there we go. That's better. So when I apologies for that, um, if you were looking at my other one and trying to figure out why did I get off, it's because like it was super grainy on the stream. It just looked terrible. So I swapped webcams, which means I had to end the stream and then reboot it. So, but anyways, I'm here to talk a little bit about how my kind of plans for the car has changed a lot since I initially got it. Because when I first bought the car, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. Because, like, the... To be honest, like, and this, this is regarding my 81 Mustang, although it also regards a few other vehicles, too, to be honest. Because even, like, my 86 Mustang, how that has changed a bunch, too. So, like, my 81 Mustang, which she's affectionately called Stitch, named after Stitch from Disney's Lilo and Stitch. I love that movie a lot and affectionately named that um, because the one thing is Stitch was incredibly stubborn to me when trying to get her back on the road again. Uh, she had sat for at least 10 years. That's what I was told. It may have sat for even longer than that because it still had original spark plugs in it, so who knows, really? And there's a reason why, like, you know, the back two especially were did not want to come out at all. They they were a real pain in the ass. But, like, that, that 81 Mustang, I was going to leave it mostly stock, to be honest. You know, the 200 Land 6, which I'm still retaining that almost no matter what. And if it blows up, I have access to another one, to be honest. So, I don't want it to blow up, but, you know, it is what it is. If it does happen, I've got a spare. So, there's that. Um, so, you know. But... And, like, the automatic, I was going to initially, like, I was initially going to keep it as an automatic, but I swapped it to a T5 manual after I kind of hurt the original automatic. But I had the idea of swapping it at that point. But when I first bought the car, because I initially wanted a car that, uh, it fit some criteria that I wanted for my first car. So I wanted it to be a little bit unique. I wanted it to be somewhat good on fuel economy. And I wanted it to be able to fit out front of my house with the orientation that I had to park the car at the time because it's not like how it is now. We actually made room so that I could actually have two cars, even though the one I'm actually going to be selling her, unfortunately. It's just I can't afford to run it anymore, um, which is sad, and I can really use the money. So, And so could my dad, oddly enough. So that's the reason why I'm doing it. And... Will there be a time that I buy her back again? Who knows? It might just be that car that I keep buying back over and over and over again. I doubt it, but you never know. Um, and, I mean, I haven't gotten any real offers on the car, so there's that. But getting back to, you know, the A1 Mustang. Because when I first got the car, like, it, it still had the original interior in it, which now it doesn't. I mean, although it didn't have a headliner, it didn't have a carpet in it. Um, and But the rest of the interior was all there. Except it was all in the trunk and in the back seat. So I didn't know if it was all there or not. Thankfully it was. You know, so I... The only unfortunate thing is the A-pillar plastics are not the original pewter. They are uh, tan. Which I don't know why they're like that. I want to see if I could uh, match... Like get some paint made to paint those up to match the rest of it. But... You know, it's one of those things, right? Of something I'll do in the future. It doesn't really bother me all that much because I rarely ever look at the A-pillars, to be honest. I'm always looking at the dashboard or out the window or, you know, never at the A-pillars, though, because I never have to. So, but anyways, that's besides the point. So getting back to, though, like how plans change. Because with that car, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I didn't know if I was initially going to actually keep it fully stock. Was I going to swap it with a 302? Was I going to do something weird with it and try and do like a, actually something that I, um, uh, something that I joked about, but I actually kind of thought about it. It'd be kind of interesting. And I would have had so many haters on it is doing a Dodge swap in the car saying like a 318 Magnum or something like that. It, it would have pissed a lot of people off. Um, and then doing like an NV3500, you know, manual behind it or something like that was an idea I had at one point. And it was such a stupid idea, to be honest. But I I, I was going even further than that. Because what I was going to do was, you know, 
not that I, there's no badging on the car whatsoever. All of that was removed and was in the car, but a lot of it was just in tatty shape and whatever else. And just like, ah, screw it. I'm not going to put it back on the car. But I had this like idea and it was just so funny. I just like, okay. So what I was going to do was change the, uh, so give it, you know, a Dodge powertrain, right? And then actually badge it as a Dodge Charger. Which, the funny thing about that, because if you don't know, the L-body Dodge Charger that was in the 80s, if you squint, kind of looks similar. Kind of. Although they were hatchback only. There was no notchbacks like that one is. So, you know, there's there's that. But I've always had that idea of, like, get a hatchback early Fox body Mustang and put a Dodge Power Strain in it and, you know, paint it up to, you know, look like a a charger which it's it just it's just a funny thing that i've thought about i'm not actually gonna do it but it'd just be kind of funny right but you know so going away from kind of the memes though about it i didn't know what i was gonna do with the car and what's interesting is i got so much flack specifically from one group and there was there was a few people that just hated there was one admin especially hated my car uh, I can't remember the dude's name, to be honest, but it was a, an admin in Western Fox Body Canada. And the thing is, that car with the inline six, and I, after a while, I've thought of, you know, just like, well, am I going to keep the motor? Just like, yeah, actually, the 200 inline six, it runs pretty good. Uh, you know, it's economical. I may as well just keep the engine. It's just, it's easier in the end. Even though it's gotten a little more complicated because of mods I've wanted to do, but that's fine. But anyways, I kept arguing with this stupid admin that he was just one of these guys that says, oh, a, a Mustang has to have a V8 in it no matter what, even though I kept telling him the very the VIN number one and VIN number two Mustangs both have inline sixes. Uh, VIN number one was a coupe, like a, a notchback. And VIN number two was a convertible, both inline six cars. So that's why you get that scene in um, in Ford versus Ferrari when uh, he's talking about, like, when uh, it was Christian Bale's character. Um, God, I can't think of the actual person's name that he was portraying. But basically, um, he says, and lose that the inline six and ditch the idiotic three speed in it and somehow lose half a ton and lower the price but even then i still choose a chevy chevelle right that scene because yeah the vid number one was a inline six car and i kept trying to reiterate to, to this guy as well for a long time actually it was months until i finally got kicked out of the group to be honest um was that there were more there are more mustangs that do not have a v8 than with them at like they were made period period you know there was a lot of six cylinders there was a lot of four cylinders made and there's quite a few v8s uh, absolutely but the bulk of them were not v8s so it's a little interesting what you know people think of that way and if you're wondering if you know what this is, like, this, this is pretty much a crack. Um, I love this stuff so much. My dad somehow found, they, they sell this stuff, like, around Christmas time. And it's a Canada Dry, um, it's like pomegranate. And, oh, it's so good. But, so getting back to what I was talking about, though, sorry. ADD works like that. It just goes back and forth like crazy. Um, so... It got to the point where there was actually a guy in the group that just, he just wanted to help me and just uh, get this guy off my back. He offered me um, the K-member, all the suspension, and I, um, it was a 302 from, I think, a 69, actually. I uh, want to say it was Galaxy or maybe Mustang, I can't remember, but the the date went back to, you know. 69 which is like that's actually a really good block to use 
And it would make a decent amount of power, even if it's only, like, the two-barrel version still. You know? And it was one of those things where I contemplated it, but he said he would only give it to me if I put it in that car. Which I didn't really want to do. I wanted to retain the inline six, and I have. And it's just such a fun little engine. It doesn't make a ton of power, but that's okay. You know, the car's light, and you can throw it around. It's fantastic to drive. I love driving that car. But it's one of those things, you know, of people that just don't don't like that. And that's fine. I don't... I know there are some people that watch my channel that they have zero feelings over what the car is. They just like the content. You know, and there's going to be a lot of people, though, that actually love the cars and whatever else and, you know, watch because of the cars and as well as me. But, you know, it's one of those deals, right? Um, people will always hate on your car. Just about guaranteed. Doesn't matter what you do to it. It could be a absolutely mint condition, beautiful car that's all original. And people will say, no, you have to modify it. You have to put an LS in it. Uh, you could have a fully modded out car and they say no you have to change this this and this it has to have like a t56 manual not a t5 manual it can't be an automatic it has to be a manual transmission you know all that stuff i've, I've heard it all it's kind of ridiculous to be honest um and yet and i i did it's interesting though how much more respect my car gets now that it's actually a t5 manual versus when it was just an automatic uh there were so many people that hated on my car but then now that they see the manual they go "Ooh, that's kind of cool right and they respect it more. But, like, I'm still not fully set on what the exact vision of the car is. And I've owned it for uh, four years now. Right? Like, it's it's been just over four years of ownership of that car. And I've had it on the road for three of those years. So, it's quite a fun little rig, to be honest. But, and, like, and how it's changed. Because... I was initially thinking, you know what, maybe I'll keep the stock interior in the car and, like, get the seats sort of reupholstered, whatever else, and, you know, run it that way. Not that I could really afford to do it, but, you know, I thought about it. And, you know, just put, like, a black carpet and a black headliner in it and call it the good, right? But I decided, no, I'm not going to do that. I trashed those seats. I actually found them a few months later. I... I was tempted, or actually it was close to a year later, to be honest. I was tempted to grab them, but I was just like, no, not worth it. Just not worth it. Even though they're quite rare seats, but I can always, I can find those seats. I actually know where there is a set of those um, actually out at my buddy Keith's place um, in one of his Fox bodies. So it's one of those things. That I, it's not like I haven't thought about going back to the kind of original sort of style of seat. And I have pictures of the seats still. And, you know, if somebody was so inclined uh they had good enough skills whatever else if they can match the interior color it'd be kind of cool i don't know if i'm gonna do that though and if i did i'd modify the seat in a way that it would actually kind of you know hug me a bit and you know kind of keep me in the turns and stuff like that because i like to take that thing at speed around turns it just it handles quite well it's got a bit of body roll it's not as bad as say like the, the caddy that I drove um, the uh, the other week. <laughs> Actually, that, that was on Monday. You know, that was a that was a fun car to drive, and it's quick too. Uh, being a seventy three Cadillac Eldorado with a five hundred cubic inch, it moves pretty good, and it's fifty two hundred pounds. But you know, so that changed. Like, and with the, with the seats, for example, that changed because I was trying to find so i wasn't looking for a full parts car to be honest at the time i was just looking straight up for a actually all i was looking for was the rear defrost switch and i post in a local group here in sundry and i come across greg which greg i have uh you know I've been out there a lot. In fact, a, you know, my the Vruck is out there, which that's actually sold at the moment. But, you know, guys haven't come to pick it up yet. And my convertible parts car is out there. Right? I've had other cars out there as well, just storing them temporarily. 
Uh, the Capri was out there for a bit. I've even had my Mustang out there for a little bit. I don't usually keep vehicles there very long. Um, some things, like parts cars, is one thing. I'll keep those there for a while. And he doesn't really care because I've cleared out so many vehicles for him. He doesn't care. Um, you know, which is great. And, you know, unlike most people, I don't have to pay rent to, you know, store vehicles there. Other people do, but I don't. It's fantastic. Um, but so I come across him and what's funny is he sends this picture of this notchback 83 Mustang. I'm like, okay, let's go check it out. Right. And my car wasn't on the road yet or anything like that. I was just still getting it together. So I walked from here all the way to this place. It took me about half an hour because it, it's a little over a kilometer to walk. Right? So it was like 20, 30 minutes, and he sends me the GPS pin of where he is, and so I go there, right? And I check out the car, and there were some things. I was like, well, maybe the trunk lid's good. Because I was just trying to justify buying this car. And at the time, I just couldn't justify it. So I'm like, no, I'm not going to buy this. Well, a few months on, I actually end up buying the car and i only bought it for 350 bucks it's actually a good price the car was very rusty like it just was not worth repairing to be honest it had 3.8 v6 that i don't even know if it ran um i didn't know what i know now to hotwire it because i could have hotwired it because it's carbureted and simple right and who knows maybe it would have run but i don't know it looked like it had a blown head gasket though too um, but I took the seats and I took the carpet out of that car and then I basically parted out the rest and then I sold the entire car to another person that they said they were going to rebuild it. And then I found it in a junkyard about a year later. So I wasn't shocked to see it in the junkyard and they didn't do anything with it, period. Uh, they actually, all they did was they, they pulled the motor out and the transmission. That was it. Everything else is still there. <laughs> so it's just kind of funny, you know? So, and those seats, which I still have those seats, and I'd be willing to sell them if anybody is looking for Fox Body seats that are cheap for a notchback. Like, I'd let them go for, you know, like, even 60 bucks. They're in my shed right now. I could go get rid of them. Um, oh, sorry. I just got a message on a uh, T-Bird I'm selling. Yes, it is. So, anyways, um, yeah, it's one of those things. And then those seats, I was going to keep those seats for a while because they're nice and comfortable. They're even more comfortable than the seats I currently have in the car because the seats I have in the car right now are a little more, um, they are a lot more sporty as opposed to comfort. So, I managed to get those the seats that are in the car now for a carburetor and actually it was my buddy a uh, team mechanic he just picked up those seats for me and he actually gave the carburetor to the dude it was a really good deal for me because i mean i didn't pay much for that carburetor and i get seats for my car it's perfect and oh hi saber hi buddy what's the problem come here there you go hi buddy Everybody, say hi to Saber. He's a big fat cat. Hi, buddy. Big old cat, too. He's um, 24 years old. You know? Basically, there's there's about four years between the two of us. I, I'll be 28 this year. Or, wait, no. Why did I say that? No, I'll be 27 this year. So, there's not four years. It's five years. You know? We don't know exactly when he was born, though. But we know... That he'll be 24 this year. So, and I'll be... No, wait. No, I will be 20. Why am I not remembering how old I am right now? I was born in 96. Come on. I should know this. And I'm as stupid as it is. I'm doing math. Um, Give me a second here.
Yeah, okay, so I will be 27 this year. Oh my god. I, I, that's... Sometimes my brain doesn't work the way it should. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, so how, so the seats, yeah, and I, I swapped those seats, and that was last summer that I swapped those in, and they're, they're good seats. I like them. They're not super comfortable. I'd like a little more padding in them, but other than that, they're perfect. They hug me really well, and they're just perfect. Um, you know, because, and the only reason why I swapped out those other seats, um, because the other seats were more comfortable. Uh, but I just wanted seats that hugged me a little more because going around corners, I was kind of slipping out of the seat a bit. So, you know, it was one of those things. And these seats even look better because they're in better shape. Because those other ones, like, had a little bit of tearing on them. Uh, there you go. There we go. Sorry. Um, just replying to a message. Um, so, yeah, like, that happened with the car. You know, even thinking, like, I, I did want to put a limited slip differential in the car. It wasn't just for, uh, you know, burnouts and stuff like that. It was actually so that I could, um, driving it in, like, the winter, get better traction. And there's such a misconception about that because people think, oh, you know, it's better to have an open differential in the wintertime because if you hit a patch of ice, it's less likely to slip because it's only one wheel. When it's just like, no, <laughs> no, open differential in the wintertime is terrible. It's terrible. So, you know, I swapped the... It's interesting, because I don't know if the rear end was original in that car, because I've never seen another one with this rear end. So, it had a six and three quarter rear end, which you actually found in, like, four-cylinder Pintos. Um, and it was in that, but it was stock-length Fox bodies, so some early four-banger cars could have it as well for the Fox bodies, but still haven't seen one. That's the only time I've seen that six and three quarter, period, in anything. So, because I haven't really looked underneath Pintos. But, um, yeah, and that was 273 gears, and it was just a dog, to be honest. That thing was so slow. So slow. With the automatic, with the one barrel, all that stuff. And, you know, and I've done the two barrel conversion, I've done the dual exhaust, and I've done a few different things to that, to be honest, just to make it a lot better. That's fun. Uh,. Um, as a <sighs> Sorry about that. So, yeah. Like how that thing has changed, and how the plans have changed with that car. Because even like you know now I'm gonna be doing this just for purposes of returning tail lights to a friend of mine. Is actually going to the rear bumper cover is gonna be swapped. I'm no longer gonna have the pace car bumper cover, um, and as well. The other thing that's going to be uh, done, so the rear bumper cover is going to be changed out as well as the tail lights. I'm going to be taking them out of one of his parts cars um, while I'm up there next week. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be quite cool. And I'll show you guys how to do that and how easy it actually is to do the swap because it's literally just taking out, uh, it's like 20, I believe, or so, maybe even more than that. Um, nuts that you have to take out 
and then put him back on with the new bumper cover and taillights. So it's going to have a way different ass end on it, which is going to look really cool and going to be very unique because you were never, well, I wouldn't say never, but it's something that I haven't really seen done. Um, it's quite unusual, and it's something that I've always wanted to do. Not necessarily with this specific rear end, but it's, uh, much more rare. You know, much more rare to see this rear end, period. And it's just quite unique. Um, and it's gonna actually fit the car a little better than what is currently on there, only because the pace car bumper, it's silver, and it's got the, the pinstripes on it, um, but I can paint this bumper, which I'm gonna do, you know, to match what I have done with the body on Stitch, and actually I'm probably going to end up actually doing a little bit more than that as well um i really can't wait like i said and i might actually because something because i'm not gonna have a lot of time while i'm up there um because so plans have changed a little bit because next week going up with my dad to see disturbed in edmonton fantastic and then on the weekend the car is going to get uh dyno so stay tuned for that we'll see how little of power that car actually makes i don't really know what it's going to make for power but in saying that um the concert for disturbed actually it got changed because of um the playoffs going on they had to bump it a day so it was initially going to be next wednesday now it's next thursday so which i can't wait i've seen disturbed once it was absolutely fantastic and i can't wait to see them again but so because they it's changed to thursday um me and my dad were gonna go up on thursday but i am gonna take my car up because the, you know there's no point it's, it's going to be cheaper in the end for me to drive up, like us driving up with our cars normally um, separately. And I can park my car at Keith's place and then we can go to the concert. But I might go up a day earlier because I can do the aforementioned stuff that I mentioned to my car. And just not be rushed about trying to do those mods because don't get me wrong it's not going to take me terribly long it'll take me a little over an hour um i think to actually swap out the entire bumper cover and stuff like that i've done it before it's it's time consuming that's all it is because you're just taking off a bunch of nuts and putting on different ones um but hopefully i can convince keith to to bring said vehicle to the shop so i can just use power tools make it so much faster on myself that instead of using hand tools just you know <laughs> now there's going to be i think two or four total that i can't use power tools on i'll have to use a wrench that's okay just due to the location of them uh because he's got you know uh air ratchet makes it so much faster right and the bonus is that he gets you know the bumper cover you know the pace car bumper cover for free and I get to, um, you know, in exchange for one he has, which it's just a parts car for him, so it's totally fine. He doesn't, he doesn't care, right? And it's already gray. It's not the correct gray of the car, but it'll match a little better than silver does, which is fantastic. Actually, I just want to make sure that. Um, because I am going to check something just to make sure that this is all running good. Um, there it is. So, um, but yeah, so that whole, basically how that car has changed a lot and, and how the plans have changed in that car a bunch. You know, because initially, like, I, I thought about swapping it to the Toro 2 and thought about you know, swapping it to a manual and whatever else. And obviously I did do the manual, 
but I didn't do the, um, you know, I didn't do the V8 swap. I kept the inline six, and I'll retain that inline six for a very long time. I, I can't confirm whether or not that I will keep the inline six forever, but I love that engine, so why not, you know? And now that I have access to a spare motor, I could potentially, you know, if I get the money together, build one out, you know? I could build it, like, I, I could make a deal on Keats, because he paid nothing for it. And to be honest, something he could do. Because <laughs> I could just be like, well, you know, I did pick up that transmission for you, and yes, you paid for the trip, but what's my time worth? How about that motor? <laughs> you know? Well, see, I know he doesn't give a crap about the motor, so it's an old inland six. Why would he care about it? Like, and we just needed the transmission for the Capri, um, so which he got that all swapped in now, and appears to be going pretty good, but it still has an issue with shifting into third. Um, so that's a little interesting, but we'll figure that one out eventually. Um, you know, he's hoping that putting some cleaner through it whenever else will do the trick. And I told him, if that doesn't do it, then potentially flushing the transmission might. But we'll see, to be honest. But an even, my 86 convertible. So, because I was only the third owner of that car, initially, I was like, I kind of want to keep it original or as original as i can to a degree but then i thought about well how about doing something a little fun and a little different with it because everybody would do a 302 swap which i did do a 302 swap but because the motor blew up and then i sold it and somebody swapped in a bad 302 and i swapped in a good 302 um but having said that so that car i was thinking about putting a 3.8 supercharged engine in it from a super like a thunderbird super coupe it's a kind of an unusual swap to put in anything to be honest people bag on those motors but they're honestly fantastic you can go talk to uh uh you know my buddy shane about that he's like one of the go-to guys apparently for that sort of thing like he he's gotten you know 400 horsepower to those and it'd still be reliable. You know, it's pretty good. So, you know, it's something I thought about. And I, I still contemplate, like, you know, if I'm able to keep the car, which I don't know if that's going to be, uh, if I'm going to be able to do that. Um, like, the only way I think I'd be able to is if I sell my truck, which I don't even use my truck, so... It's fine. It's not even registered at this point. But I need to get a. I need to get my truck back here, and then sell it, or just chuck it in an auction or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But yeah, um, that. So that thing, like originally three point eight V six, and then like I said, thought about the super coupe swap. Didn't end up doing that. It was swapped to the three hundred two. It was a bad three hundred two. Swapped it for this three hundred two, which is out of an eighty eight T bird. So, technically, there is something T-Bird in the car. <laughs> um, and then I, you know, just said, screw it. And, uh, you know, with that 302 and in it, which is, it's not a bad engine. It's just a little tired, to be honest. The low compression motor. It could use a rebuild. Um, because here's the thing. It makes, essentially, stock numbers, even though it's got a bunch of upgrades on it. Because it's a tired motor. And it's just it's kind of disappointing. But it is what it is, right? And you know, um, because even like and how things have changed or how plans have changed as well, because there's something, uh, if you haven't seen the updates on that. So the Fargo, I was gonna attempt to get the thing running and just show you how you can basically a, a vehicle that's sitting and motors seized up how to actually potentially get it running without spending a bunch of money because you could spend a lo crap load of money trying to get a car running you don't have to though there are things you can do to make it simpler on yourself and cheaper 
and I was going to show that off. And, you know, I was kind of excited to try and get the thing running and driving for the first time in about 40 years. Um, but unfortunately, it just is not going to happen because I pulled the plugs out of it. Although they were only hand tied in, so somebody was playing around with that before. Um, and so I take them all out and I inspect the plugs. I'm like, these are actually, it's interesting because somebody put these in and they weren't really used. They're just quite rusty, but you look at the plugs and like, that's like hardly used. This one maybe ran for like a thousand kilometers, if that, you know? So I take them all out because initially like I can't turn the motor by turning the fan. I just, I couldn't do it. It's a very low compression engine. It should be able just to turn very easily, to be honest. It's a flathead V, or not a flathead V6, a flathead inline six, right? It's a 208 or 218 cubic inch. I can't remember. Uh, only makes like 180 horsepower though, or did. But I look at cylinder one. It's a little rusty. Not too too terrible though. Like you could get it unstuck, to be honest, probably. Cylinder two. Again, similar, not too bad. Cylinder three, though, there's a pinhole. Uh, like, there's a little hole in the piston, which that's never a good thing. Um, cylinder four, I, I think it was cylinder four, the top layer of the piston is actually coming apart, like, from rust. It's lifting. So, not uh, a good thing. And actually, I should lower this down a little bit. There we go. That's a little better. Um, you know, it's one of those things that just compounding stuff. And yes, could that be rebuilt? Or could we find another Flathead 6 around and swap it in? Sure. But it was my idea to try and revive this thing anyways. And I was going to use basically my money to do it just for content for the channel. Because it's not my truck. That is Greg's track. I just wanted to see if I can get it running and driving. And then, uh, you know, I'll show you guys how to drive an old truck like that. And showcasing my very first time driving anything quite that old. The oldest thing I've ever driven is a 56 Pontiac. Which, sadly, that video does not have much views at all. It's actually kind of uh, not very uh, good. I understand it's not a Tri-5 Chevy. It's a Tri-5 Pontiac. So there's that's one of the reasons why, but you know, it's one of only like I think five vehicles total that I've driven for the channel that have not been mine. So and there's gonna be more. Like I'm going to uh there's you know my buddy's 82 Mustang GT. I want to review that. I potentially want to review the Capri, that 81 Capri that I drove for a while and I worked on. I did quite a bit of work for that thing because I got it to run a lot better. I swapped out the headlights. I got the taillights working properly. You know, um, basically just all the stuff that I did to my car. Except I um, like I deleted all the vacuum lines that were unnecessary because a lot of them are emissions-based. Some of those vacuum lines are actually for that carburetor and with like cold starts. But what's dumb is just like, you shouldn't need that. You should just be able to do a cold start without having a mess of vacuum lines. So, but like, something that I'm trying to convince uh, Keith to do is to do the swap that I did, to do a two barrel swap on it, which they've, those adapters have been gone way down in price, <laughs> to be honest. You can buy one of those adapters on Amazon with free shipping for $65. It's cheap. Then you just need a, you know, Motorcraft 2100 carb or even a Holly or whatever. Um, basically, as long as it, you know, is similar to, like, bolting down to that Motorcraft, because that's all that matters. Um, if the bolt holes are in the correct locations. So, but, Yeah. It's one of these things, and even like with my car right now, because there's something that I might do while I'm up there even, um, the carburetor might get swapped. And what might actually happen is I might have a winter carb and a summer carburetor. 
So I am thinking about because I have that Holly two barrel that uh, I actually acquired from as a gift from Roy Marco. Now I've gone through it. I've replaced all the gaskets in it, and um, I just didn't replace the needle and seat, but replaced everything else. To be honest, so and the needle and seat actually looked to be in really good shape. I still have the the rest of the rebuild kit, so if need be, I could do that. But I might put the Holly carb on there. Um, the only thing that I'm going to check when I'm up there is I'm going to take the, the bulls apart again and to check what jets are in that carburetor. Because something I've thought about, my problem with... So I have the taller tires on my car, right? Those taller, wider tires. And the thing is... I have this issue now with the manual transmission. I didn't have this with an automatic because with the torque converter, there's a little bit of slippage involved. So it didn't have this issue of like basically bogging off the line. And, you know, when you, um, if you try and dump the clutch, it will bog and then go. So the thing is, because everybody was saying power valve, power valve, power valve. The power valve is fine to be honest, in the carburetor. I just don't... Th there there are two ways you can fix this. There's two. Potentially three. And this is, this is what I want to check, because I can't remember what jets are on that carburetor. If they happen to be better than a 48 jet in that carburetor, I'm going to either swap that Holly on there or take my carburetor apart swap those jets out because the motorcrafts unfortunately you have to take just about the entire carburetor part just to get to the jets because they're underneath the float it's a terrible design to be honest um in that regard the hollies are really convenient for swapping out jets but in saying that though so i um because i think they're like 50s or 51s um and it's possible that it's I can rejet the carburetor and it will get enough fuel that it will actually not bog anymore when dumping the clutch with those big tires on it. We'll see, of course. I don't truly know. Although I was surprised because when I um so when I was in Calgary um on Monday, I met my buddy team mechanic and we actually went to the junkyard together that's where that uh video of that matador came from um and because we were just searching around uh there was this old mobile that he wanted to take the carburetor off of potentially but he uh turns out they sold it so I was just like oh man so, or they didn't sell it but they i guess they got rid of it they just crushed it so that's fine you know um and afterwards when we were done like basically when they were closed up we drove each other's cars like i drove his uh caddy for i was just down the block and back and then he drove my car and the thing is um and then because he just drove it rather gingerly my car and with his car because like he said well you know you could get on it if you want to so i pinned his his car just to see what i would do and i was quite surprised at how spry that thing is for a 5200 pound pig um but when I show when I asked, well, do you want me to show you what my car can do? And he's like, sure. So he hops in my car, and I was surprised because when I dumped the clutch, I got a little bit of a tire squawk, and then it bogged. I'm like, those two seven fives squawked? Really? That was the first time I've ever heard those tires squawk. Period. So that's a little interesting. Um, I do also wonder if it's going to be, uh, going up to Edmonton, because I haven't really tried, uh, dumping the clutch up there and seeing what it does, because it's lower elevation, so the car actually runs better up there. Even though it runs pretty good down here, it makes more power up there because it's lower elevation. So, it's something to wonder about, you know? Um, that way. And that's the interesting thing about carburetors, people don't realize, is different climates make them run differently. As opposed to fuel injection with, um, or typical fuel injection that has computers controlling all of that, 
it controls all the variables. But carburetors, there's nothing really controlling it. It is honestly just um it's honestly just mechanical right carburetors are 100 percent mechanical the only thing that's typically electric on them is you can have an electric choke um and you can have a well actually that, that's about it because you know the ignition has nothing to do with the carburetor so um yeah it's just one of those things you know and it, and it it's stuff that is interesting like especially you know as a thing and i didn't do it today i was just like i did not it was just a little too warm for me to tear apart half the motor on my dad's car because i honestly didn't really realize that oh to replace the spark plugs in my dad's car, you have to take the the upper intake plenum off, which is so stupid. Such a stupid design. Why can't it be where you don't have to do that? Right? So, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of work involved. You have to take apart a bunch of electrical connections and stuff like that. And it's just kind of dumb, to be honest. Um, that's... And then so I put out a little short today to basically talk about that and to say, like, you know, how dumb this design is, as opposed to, you know, my 81 Mustang, which is my daily driver, and, like, you can access the spark plugs no problem in that car, right? They're just out in the open. It takes no time at all to change out the plugs. Where in, you know, my dad's car, it'll probably take me about an hour. Where in my, you know, in my 81 Mustang, it'll take me, like, 15 minutes. You know, it's just kind of silly. But, um, yeah, so it's just one of these interesting things you know when dealing with just these newer cars right of how much of a pain in the ass they are to work on and yes there are much worse vehicles for maintenance than that magnum but it's still not great because like anytime you want to do something to that magnum it's typically cost like 400 bucks uh with labor it's like 400 bucks you know and it's just ridiculous because it's mercedes like that that magnum even though yes it says dodge on it it's a Mercedes E-Class underneath. It's not, you know, it's not anything that, that is domestic in that regard. The motor, I, that's actually uh, their own design for the, the engine. The transmission uh, is basically straight out of a Mercedes. It's just modified for the Dodge. The all-wheel drive system is a formatic straight up. You know, it's just, it's very interesting of how they are that way. And like I said, the whole underpinnings of the car is Mercedes E-Class. Um, you know, which it makes the car actually, like, it's a decent car. Reliability is fantastic on it. But when it comes to maintenance, it's a nightmare. And... You know, newer cars, components are designed, they aren't just designed to last just as long as they can. They're designed to last only a certain amount of time. Like, even that car. So, right now, it's just over 160,000 kilometers on it. It's going to need a timing belt service. Um, and it's also going to need... Uh, like, it's needed brakes for quite a while. They're not terrible, but they definitely need to be done. And then, you know, coming up, it's going to probably need suspension as well. And there's a little electrical problem that they all basically have. And that's with the blower motor. And it's the connection to the blower motor. Now, the thing is, and, if, and this is in every single LX Platform Chrysler product. So, and the LX Platform, if you don't know, this is the Chrysler 300 the Dodge Charger, 
the Dodge Challenger and the Dodge Magnum, right? Those are the only vehicles that use this platform. And I don't know if this blower motor connection, uh, if this blower motor was used in any other models than that, but it's something that you do want to watch out for. So the we actually had it in the 2005 or 2006 Dodge Magnum that my dad had. He owned it for exactly a year in Rota. Um, it's pretty sad, actually. But uh, that thing was a good vehicle, actually, overall. And so he or the uh, the blower motor, because what can happen is the the connection to the blower motor actually will short circuit. And it'll cause a fire, you know, which, welcome to Dodge Electrical. They've always been kind of terrible in that regard. I love my old Mopars, but man, are they really bad with their electrics, to be honest. I'm not a fan. I like the vehicles. I just don't like the electrical with them. But, um, in saying that, you know, I... Just don't really, you know, like, sorry, brain's just not working there. Just shut down for a second. Um, so like with that, my dad's old Magnum, it's kind of funny. Uh, we were on our way because we were having issues with the blower motor. Um, so we read up on it and just like, oh, the connection to it might be a little faulty. We look at it and just like, yeah, it's not the best. So we actually found somebody that was somewhat local that, oh, hey, let's go, uh, you know, they have a Magnum that they're parting out. Let's go contact them and take a look. And when we were going out, because we stopped at the post office and it caught on fire. <laughs> that connection caught on fire. So. <laughs> Just too funny, right? Um, at that exact moment. And then. We were able to kind of cobble it back together, and then we got there and realized, oh, the connector, the connection is actually wrong, so we couldn't even use that connector that we got. So uh, I don't know, because that was an 05 Magnum we took it out of, so they potentially changed from 05 to 06, which is kind of dumb. Why would you do that? But whatever. You know, so it's just one of these things that was just kind of funny. Um. And, see, and now, this is the one thing, is when somebody asks, is there any other issues with this T-Bird that I'm selling, I gotta see if... I'm pretty sure I included that in the ad, but I just want to make sure. Um, I don't know why they moved that. That's it's just really annoying. Let's go with... Oh, my listings. Because... I don't remember all the issues with that T-Bird. I mean, it's it's a car that's been sitting. It's going to have problems. You know? Just one of those deals, right? Um, Because I don't remember all the info I put on that thing. Because I'm pretty sure I mentioned the fuel tank, right? That it needs to be uh, drained out, which... I could potentially do. Why did I put it as a convertible? No, it's a coupe. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, I did mention that, yeah, the... the... Those need to be... Pushed out. There we go. All right, see what he says. Because realistically, I know of a way, because I actually I saw just a stupid thing of online. It's actually the what? No way guy, which turns out my buddy actually knows him, and he's from Vulcan. I had no idea. <laughs> it's just kind of funny that way. So if I ever get down there to one of their meets, I'll be able to meet him, which is just kind of funny in a way. And I'll, I will have to, for, like, my YouTube channel or something, just have him say, what? No way. As I'm, like, for example, like, 
uh if he gives me permission to like do a video on his truck or whatever i have to get him to do that because it's just too funny right just too funny um because he, he is a he's very much a car person uh he has a it's uh it's a bunch of different colors but he actually has a um early 2000 sierra like a 2000 i don't know like 2002 2003 somewhere in there um with a Cadillac Escalade front uh, clip on it, which was actually quite a popular thing to do um, for a while. And, you know, he, he did that. And it's a bunch of different colors, but it's kind of cool, actually. And he, you know, he builds roll cages and stuff like that. And, you know, just kind of neat. Um, that's something, actually, because I do want to put uh, at least a roll bar in Stitch, to be honest. It would just look kind of good, and it's a safety thing. Not that I think I'll ever roll the car, but hey, you know what? It's one of those things. It would look cool as well. Um, but just trying to think, is there anything else that I can talk about that I think about? Um, not that I can think of, to be honest. And, you know, like the next update on anything happening on the channel, I don't exactly know. When I'm going to have something for sure next week, but I don't know if I'm going to have anything this week. I I don't think so. Unless if I cobble together a, um, a drive video, because actually that's something. I need to check my messenger because I sent the guy a message. He was looking for parts. You know, because I mean, yeah. I want two things. What uh, you pay for? There, because guy, there's a guy asking for a a certain little harness that's on the on my parts car, which doesn't bother me. It's literally for the um because i don't care if anybody if even if somebody grabs a component to make that car not run anymore i really don't care because it's one of these things where the motor and actually the motor runs pretty good it smokes a bit but i i could put some marble mystery oil in it i better clear it up but it's just not something that i'm really um you know interested in pursuing that thing at all although i have thought about making my own sort of vet cart with it and basically what i mean by that is okay see how fast we can actually make it and how light we can make it with spending basically no money because it's already stripped there's no carpet in the car because the carpet's actually at my buddy's place right now um there's no front bumper cover there there's no rear bumper cover on it um there's no doors on it the roof is gone i took the convertible top motor as well i actually have it it's in my front entry so you know it's stuff like that that i have um i've thought about that it'd be kind of an interesting sort of build that way where we we take that 3.8 out or no actually no we take the 3.8 out put a 302 in it just a basic 302 and we strip as much as we can off of it and see how it goes But, you know, it's one of these things where, um, cause yeah, and even like this, this, this Thunderbird, cause the one thing is I'm selling a, it's a 70, 78 or 79 T-Bird. It's kind of a 302 and it. it runs, smokes a bit, if I remember correctly. I don't remember actually. Um, you know, the brakes do work, but you need to run it off with no fuel system. Suspension seems to work okay. 
it's got a bit of rust today, whatever else. It's just, it's a vehicle that's been sitting forever. You know, like, I don't know how long it's been sitting for, but I did get it running and driving last summer with Team Mechanic, actually. And, you know, it's um, just one of those things. Um, and this guy is, like, asking me all these questions about it. It's like, I don't really know overall. Because he keeps asking me, like, is there anything else wrong with it? Just, like, not that I'm aware of. You know? I got the headlights working. Because I had to replace the one headlight. And I think all the electrical works. I don't know for sure, though. I can't remember. Because, again, I haven't touched it in, like, a year. No, I wouldn't take 500 for it. Yeah, and considering I'm asking 1200 bucks for a vehicle, and the guy asked me 500 bucks, I'm like, no, it's worth more than that. Even though you need to clear out the fuel system. But also, I think you clear out the fuel system, you clean it up a little more than I did, and you've got a decent car overall. You could give it a bit of a tune-up, even though it runs pretty decent, actually, but give it a tune-up, and just have a nice cruiser. Because it's a, it's a 70s, late 70s T-Bird. It'll float down the road. Pretty good. Like, yeah, it probably needs more than I'm thinking. But I know, like, the one fuel line has been cut because we uh, had a um, an electronic sort of fuel pump on it. But that's it. You know? And... The thing actually, or no, we didn't have an electronic one, actually. That's right. We That's where we plumbed in the line. But the thing is, it was one of these, like, hand pump. It was just a hand pump. So we had to prime the system. And then you start it. And it'll run for a while, but then eventually it'll stall out. You see that in the video, actually, that I did. So. But, you know, it's one of those things that... I am um... Yeah, I'm just, you know, waiting on some stuff. But, I don't know, if there's anybody anybody wants to talk about in the chat or whatever, feel free, because I'm running out of things to talk about. I've been tap dancing for an hour now, so <laughs> nobody said a thing in the chat. Which, and that's the one thing. I can talk to myself, for sure, but it's better to have interaction, because otherwise I'm just going to sign off and um, I'm going to jump on the game for a bit. So, and for like about an hour or so, and then go to bed. Um, because otherwise, yeah, I'm thinking of ending the stream, to be honest. Because it's just, you know, there's only so much I can talk about. Right? Because, you know, I've talked about the cars extensively. I've talked about what's going to come to the channel and whatever else. Which is not as much that I'd like to have coming to the channel. Because a revival series on that uh, Fargo would be cool. But just not to be. Because that's the thing. I could probably find a motor for that thing for, like, no money. Oh, that's the food I'm wearing.
Um, but yeah, you know what? I think I'm I'm just gonna end the stream here. So thank you everybody to that has watched, and I hope you guys did enjoy. Um, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>